wonderful experience here yesterday afternoon with uh, Bishop Bartosik uh, confirming some of our, our young people. And uh, the Spirit was here. And I hope the Spirit is lingered around to uh, bless us as well. And one of the directions he gave to the uh, confirmation candidates was at different times, especially when they is anointed, close your eyes, just let the distractions uh, and the worry of what I'm supposed to do, just let that flow away so that you can invite the Lord into uh, your life. Maybe at times during the Mass, you might close your eyes as well, uh, inviting the Lord. And gratefully, we gather in the Spirit this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your Spirit. The Gospel of Jesus takes us up to the mountain where he's transfigured, he's revealed who he is, and then he comes back down to the lowlands where we live each day, so that we may prepare to meet the Lord, uh, either in mountaintops or where we live each day. You were sent to heal the contrite of all, Kyrie eleison. Sinners, Christe You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, who called our ancestors Abraham and Sarah, God of the covenant, in a bright cloud, you overshadowed Peter, James, and John, and made them witnesses to your son's transfigured glory. It is good for us to be here. Let us listen with every generation of disciples to your Son, with whom you are well pleased. Then, at his touch, may we go get up and go unafraid to tell others about the life Jesus has brought to light. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who saves his people from their sins and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In our first reading, uh, Abram and Sarah encounter God, and it's the first conversation they have in establishing the covenant between God's people and, and God. Uh, Abram is around 75 years old at this time, and yet, he responds when God says, go, he goes. Uh, whatever our, our age, are, are we prepared to uh, respond to God's call in, in our life? And in the second reading, Paul's letter to uh, Timothy, um, he talks about the struggles that we have and what allows us to bear those struggles. And he says, it's the strength that comes from God. And so we have to be open to that unearned strength that indeed the Lord has waiting for us. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go forth, from the land of your kinsfolk, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and curse those who curse you. 
all the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word.
Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. When he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. I was in an online conference yesterday on health care from birth to end of life. And Father Todd Cholchik, the Director of Education of the National Catholic Bioethics Center, related the story of a woman, let's call her Lorraine, not her real name, who is strongly considering ending her pregnancy. The baby boy in her womb was diagnosed with Down's syndrome meaning he has an extra chromosome and he will have a different way of learning when he's born. Lorraine was not sure she was up to the task for caring for him. Best estimates put that 70% of women whose unborn babies um, are diagnosed with Down's syndrome would terminate their pregnancy. Now, Lorraine went on a retreat to think about this a little bit more. And one afternoon, when he, she was walking to the cafeteria uh, to get some snack, she noticed a young boy mopping the floor. She was deep in thought when uh, suddenly um, the boy, who by this time was close to her table, lifted up his head and looked at her and smiled at her. And she noticed that this boy had Down's syndrome. Suddenly, he approached her and put his arm around her, around her shoulders. And perhaps noticing that she's a little stressed out, uh, tried to comfort her by saying, he'll be fine. His supervisor noticed this and smiling told Lorraine, you know, he's never done this before. In many ways, what Lorraine is going through in her life's journey is similar to what many of us are going through as well. Indeed, our life is a journey. It begins with God, with our creation, and ends with God our eternal happiness. There are many different roads that God has designed for different people, but not one of them begins without God and none ends without God. The Jesuit theologian Peter Grieft connects the four readings we heard earlier this morning to the meaning of this journey and the four steps that accompany it. First, in that journey, we need a car travel. And that vehicle is our faith. That is the point of the first reading in the book of Genesis, when Abram left the land of his kinsfolk and went as the Lord directed him. 
It was his faith that led him to leave his comfort zone, what's familiar to him, what he loves, what he knows, and follow God's will and direction to the vast unknown, believing God's promise that he would bless the world through him and his descendants. Second, now that we have a car, we need a roadmap, which is the revelation of, God's, of God, who is the object of our faith. In just a few verses in the Responsorial Psalm, we are told ten things about God, that He is upright, trustworthy, just, righteous, and kind, and that He knows us, delivers us, preserves us, helps us, and shields us. These attributes, and there are many, many more, are how the author of Psalm 33 describes the God that he believes in, that he hopes in, that he loves. That is how God's own word describes God. It's like a self-portrait of God. And this self-portrait of God justifies our faith, our trust, our hope, and our love. That is our map on our life's journey. How else would we know that what to believe about God in our relationship with Him? He had not told us, but He has told us the Bible is the Word of God. Not man's words about God, but God's words about men. It's our roadmap. Now we have the car now. Uh, we have the roadmap. Now the third passage, the second reading from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, is about the third aspect of our journey which is the direction. A journey like a road is not a circle, it's a line, however crooked it might be. And it points in a certain direction. Where? To what end is God calling us? Holiness. We are called to be holy. Being like God, that is the high goal to which God calls each one of us, to choose good over evil. And as Father Tom mentioned earlier, in the second reading tells us that God is there through His revealed Word with us all the time to help us, to strengthen us. That journey is nothing less than to become saints. Finally, in the reading from the Gospels about Jesus' transfiguration is a little preview of the glory of heaven, our destination. It answers the question about our journey, namely, what is it like at the end? What do we get at the end? The answer is that we get the greatest of all possible joys, a face-to-face -face vision of God. That was how Jesus described heaven in this long prayer to God the Father, just before He was crucified. This is eternal life that they should know you, the only true God. To know Him, to see Him, to be with Him in person, face to face. So we have in this morning's readings, four readings. First, the vehicle of our life's journey, which is faith. Then the roadmap, which is God's revealed word. Then the direction, the goal, the end, which is holiness. Finally, the reward, the joy of the blissful vision of God. Now Lorraine, of course, gave birth to her son. In many ways, he's now a typical young boy. He loves swimming, dinosaurs, making love, sports. It takes him longer to reach milestones, but we celebrate them so much more because they are such an achievement for him, Lorraine says. These are the blessings that are interspersed into the many challenges of raising a child with Down syndrome. A child whose value and dignity are not diminished nor defined by his condition. These are the little uh, transfigurations that, that occur in Marie's life. And we too have those. We, try to, we should try to get a glimpse of the vision of God in everyone, 
in every situation. Lorraine's faith wavered, but God who knows her delivered her from committing a grave sin, helped her, preserved her by inserting a brief moment for a brief moment in her life that boy, by revealing his glory to her through that boy even for a brief moment. She listened to Jesus in her heart and found the mountain where she experienced that transfiguration. God too lifts us up to that mountain in everything that occurs in our lives. Now, so we see here that each of the four things we need comes to us only at a price. That is why being us, being a Christian, is such a great adventure. We have to give up something, sacrifice something to God and to each other. Our selfishness, our distrust, and our pride that's why we have Lent. But it's not a bad deal after all. Because we give up what makes us most deeply unhappy in exchange for what makes us most deeply happy. We give up selfishness in exchange for love. We give up fear in exchange for trust. And we give up pride in exchange for the humility that accepts the four gifts of our life's journey. When it comes to the story of your life, your journey, the ending is the key. It does not matter how many times you have sinned. What matters is that you repent and turn to God. Every saint, every one of us has a past, but we also have a future in Christ. Turn to that future today. Jesus is inviting you to find, ascend that mountain. Listen to him tell you, rise, be not afraid. grateful for a faith that allows us to profess, I believe in one, believe God, in one God, the Father, Father of Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made. I substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was his incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the point of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, to the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, we now entrust to you our petitions. They express our prayerful hope that you respond to us with your loving kindness. For the holy people of God, Transfigured through the prayer and listening to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peacemakers among nations and communities, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For prisoners and those held captive by sin, for all who seek righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For addicts and substance abusers, for recovery counselors and doctors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who share in this celebration, for catechumens and candidates responding to the call to conversion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions of this Mass, may all the intentions of this Mass be heard, especially for all our parishioners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good Lord, continue to guide us through this week of Lent. May it be a, a life-changing experience for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and freely entered his passion, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, with all the clergy and all people who seek your loving care. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faiths. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Padre Pio, Hilary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that with the help of your mercy we may be free from all sin and safe from all distress, as we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your disciples everywhere, my peace I give you, my peace is with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If your announcements, if you're interested in receiving uh, our bulletin and the uh, electronic form, you can leave your email address at the parish office. On Fridays of Lent, uh, you're invited, as well as your family and friends, to attend the Stations of the Cross. On Fridays, they're 6 o'clock in English and 7 in Spanish. Next Sunday, the Girl Scouts will sell chocolate bars, so it's one way to help support and encourage them. Also next uh, Saturday evening, we have our spring time change. Uh, so Mass will be an hour earlier, but we spring ahead one hour, so you're going to lose an hour of sleep. So time change is coming weekend. Spring forward. The sacrament of the anointing, those who are sick or struggling with, with uh, illnesses, will be at next week at all the Masses. So you're invited to bring those family members who can benefit from the uh, anointing to be here. Uh, or let us know at the office and we'll make some arrangement to uh, reach out to those individuals. The sacrament of confession of reconciliation is especially appropriate during Lent. Uh, the bulletin has uh, the schedule, and there are copies of the uh, Lenten and Holy Week schedule in the vestibule. You can take one of those with you as a reference during uh, the rest of uh, this uh, Lent. We'd like to invite uh, parish singers to come together to sing as a choir during our Holy Week services. Rehearsals will be in the school music room, which can be accessed from the parking lot. So please contact our director of music, Mark Mayer, through his email, uh, which you find in the parish bulletin. Leave him a phone message if you are interested in singing or check with him after mass. This is a wonderful way to celebrate uh, during this holy time of the year to be part of our choir. Easter flower envelopes are being circulated. You can drop them off uh, in the collection basket any week. Thank you for your generosity. And uh, also to evaluate our parish, we mentioned that the Disciple Maker Survey could take that online and again in the parish bulletin and on our, our website, uh, the parish website, you can uh, access that survey or you, you could fill out a paper copy that you can get from the parish office. I think we're out of English ones right now in the back of the church, but we'll have some next week. Finally, uh, you can still pick up one of these uh, Catholic Relief Service rice bowl banks, put your spare change in there, and at the end of Lent, you can turn that in and uh, help uh, Catholic Relief Services and their work around the world. So thank you again for your generosity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's be church after, after church. church.
escape. Yeah, let's be escape. 